Good morning, everyone. We have 60 minutes of yin this morning. My name is Kelly, for those of you that maybe don't know me. Um, whether you're practicing with me live or you're practicing later, yin is a wonderful practice. And it's certainly a good practice um, for what we're going through now. So find a comfy seat to start. Um, you can sit on a block if you want, um, maybe a pillow or a bolster or a blanket. As we move through today's practice, we will be utilizing props. Um, yin yoga does utilize props just to help you even to get deeper into these shapes that we're going to find today. So the important props for today, um, blocks would be okay. They're always good to have. We aren't going to need a strap or any kind of like scarf or anything like that today. What I would request that you have though is a blanket, um, some sort of blanket that you can fold up. Um, it's going to be very useful for us and we're also gonna use it to pat our knees, which is important. We don't want our knees to hurt. If you have a bolster, great. If you don't, um, any kind of pillow or cushion might work to help boost your hips up. So I'm actually gonna sit on a block as well. So our yin yoga practice um, looks to get into our deeper uh, tissues in our body. So we're taking it out of the muscles. We're not looking to get our heart rate up. We're not looking to work our muscles here. We're not also really looking for what's called flexibility. So a lot of people come to yoga and they're like, well, or they don't come to yoga because they're like, I'm not flexible. But that's really not what yoga is about. What we're looking for here is to maximize our range of motion. We all have, um, we all articulate differently in our joints. We're looking to maximize that articulation and make sure that it's healthy and sometimes come back to where we were before. I like to say that yin yoga kind of undoes what we do to ourselves in the daily life. So we take a lot of repetitive motions, we sit a lot, um, especially now. So yin is going to kind of undo that, to bring us back to where we were, to um, bring that healthy range of motion back. So I'll be talking about that a little bit today as we move through class. Um, we really focus on the hips in yin, and the hips are actually considered anything from the bottom of the rib cage all the way to the knees. So all of this is connected in here. We really have a very hip heavy practice today. We have a little bit more of a fiery yin practice today. I really wanna get into it. We tend to hold a lot of emotion in our hips. Whether you buy into that or not, um, we hold a lot of tension here. So a lot of times in these shapes, you might find that they're challenging. They might bring up some anger, some frustration. Know that that's normal. Emotions in yin will kind of bubble up. You just breathe through them, you notice them, you acknowledge them, and then you can kind of just let them go. Um, my best analogy that I like to use in yin is that I imagine myself sitting on the side of a river and I see my thoughts going by, I see my emotions, but it doesn't mean that I have to reach out and grab them and obsess about them. I notice them, but it doesn't mean that it has to define me. That's the best way for me to describe it. So we are gonna start out with a little bit of a breathing exercise and a mudra just for fun. As always, if you're not into this kind of thing, you can just kind of do some gentle stretching before we start. But otherwise, maybe just close down your eyes for a moment and just take a couple of breaths to arrive. So it's good to kind of set when we start and when we end, kind of, especially because we're at home, we don't have that time to come to a yoga studio and kind of prepare. So just take a moment here to take a couple breaths, feel into your body this morning. Yin really does ask us to dive a little bit deeper and connect inward, which is really the point of yoga to begin with. Begin to know your body, begin to work with your body. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about Ganesh today, or Ganesha. So Ganesha is my favorite Hindu god and he is the elephant-headed god. So he's the god of new beginnings and wisdom. He's also the remover of obstacles. So he's a good one to invoke when you're beginning on a new path or if you have an obstacle in your way. So Ganesha is also associated with the root chakra and kind of the earth element and grounding into the earth, which we can use as we are moving through our practice today. And you can connect in with Ganesha if you'd like, especially if you feel that you come up with any obstacles today as you're moving through your shapes. 
Let's take a nice deep breath in through the nose. And open the mouth, exhale and release. You can let your eyes blink open. We're gonna begin with Ganesha Mudra and we're gonna use that to kind of get into our lungs to breathe. So you can bring your right hand in front of your heart, thumb facing up and then take your left hand and flip it. So the palm is facing away from you in front and then hook the fingers. It doesn't really matter, but the right thumb can be pointing up, the left thumb down, but if you have it opposite, it doesn't matter. You can hold the elbows up, but try to drop the shoulders away from the ears. We're gonna expand the lungs. And as we're breathing, I want you to imagine your lungs 360. So that sphere, instead of on a flat plane, so I want you to imagine them opening front and back, left and right, up and down. As you inhale, put a little pressure in your fingers, pulling them away from each other. And then either through the mouth or through the nose, exhale and release that uh, pressure. Inhale, pull apart. And exhale, release. Inhale, pull apart. And exhale, release. On your own breath, take a couple more rounds of this. Again, we're just imagining that we could fill the entire lungs up. I often like to talk about the fact that we don't use our entire lung capacity or even part of it. And our lungs really help to keep us healthy. Bring the oxygen to all of the cells in our body. We're also warming up our shoulders. Well, let's take one more round of this yogis. Once you've completed that round, you can let the arms come down by the side. Let's roll out the shoulders for a moment. Beautiful. And then let the shoulders come up, down, and back away from the ears. And then drop the chin down into the chest. Take the left ear over towards the left shoulder, a little stretch for the neck. Chin comes back to center and then right ear, right shoulder. Beautiful. Keeping the chin down, you can kind of circle the neck along the bottom part of the circle if that feels okay. You know your neck well, you can start to take the full revolution, but be very cautious if there's any popping or too much clicking. You don't want any pain here. So as we're moving through these postures today, we can find intensity for sure. You can feel um, a stretch, you can feel intensity, maybe even just a little bit of burning, but what we want to avoid is sharp or shooting pain. If you ever feel that, we definitely want to back out of the shapes. And I ask you to use your own intuition or your intuition, as my teacher says, as you move into these shapes to where you should be. Hopefully I'll give you a lot of alternatives if something's not working for you, especially watch out for your knees. Okay, once your neck feels nice and warmed up, go ahead and bring the chin back to parallel. And we're actually gonna come up to standing. So our first couple of shapes we're gonna take are standing today. And again, we're gonna get into the hips. So I'm going to move my props off to the side. I'm going to move back a little bit so that you can see me. So just find um, a comfortable stance here. Feet about inner hips width distance. Then take your hands to your hips for a moment and just feel your feet rooted into the earth. So you can kind of roll back and forth on the feet here for a moment. So going from the heels to the toes. This is also called pada bandha. So the bottoms of our feet or our feet are pada. And banda means lock. So this kind of helps us to root into the earth. Beautiful. And then go ahead and stop into the center. We're just going to take some nice hip circles here. Doesn't matter the direction you're going, we'll go both. I'll go ahead and stop in the center and take it back the other way. So this is one of the nicest things that you can do for your hips is to find this rotation, and you can find it lots of different ways. You can find it with your feet together, you can find it with your feet farther apart. If you ever find yourself having to stand for long periods of time, do this, because it really brings that mobility back into our hips. Our hips have that ball and socket joint, that 360. 
you can really feel all the way around the joints. Beautiful. And gently go ahead and stop into the center. We'll warm up our shoulders a little bit. Let the arms drop down. And then as you inhale, just circle the arms up over the top of the head. And you can connect the palms if you'd like. Maybe look up if that's okay on your neck. And then exhale, hands to heart center. Well, we'll do that again. This is sun breath. Release the arms down. Inhale, reach them up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Taking it one more time, release the hands and then inhale, circle them up. As you exhale, this time cactus your arms out to the side. Take a gentle back bend here, open the chest, open the collarbones, let this feel good. Beautiful, and then reach your arms away from one another and just circle the wrists for a moment. And another joint that we sometimes don't pay attention to, but our vinyasa classes especially ask a lot of our wrists, and so does daily life, so we just give it a little bit of love. Go ahead and stop in the center, take it back the other direction. Beautiful, and let the arms come down by the sides. All right. So our first shape we're going to take this morning is called dangling, and it's a forward fold, and what it's going to do is going to warm up the back of our legs. So the props that you might need for this first one, um, I'm going to show you how you can use a blanket, and you also might want blocks for your hands. So dangling lengthens the spine, the hips, the hamstrings, and we get into hip flexion in this one. So that's where the blanket comes into play. So for me especially, I found that this blanket trick really worked for me. I find a lot of hip compression when I fold forward. So that's in the fronts of my hips. I don't have enough space and I feel bone on bone. So what can really work for you is if you take a blanket to the crease of your hips, as you fold, you're gonna find that that creates a little bit of space there. So if you wanna try that today, feel free. If you don't feel that compression, then don't worry about it. We'll all go down together and then start. Remember our yin postures are held for a little bit longer. This one is a little bit more yang-ish, so we don't hold it for as long. So the feet about hips width distance or inner hips width. Put a nice bend in your knees, especially to begin. And then go ahead and just roll yourself down. And again, I'm going to find the blanket in my hip crease. I can show you from the side. So the fingertips can be down or it can be really nice to have something to have your hands on to press into. You can also build it up and put your forehead on it as well. So fold to your ability. Definitely keep that bend in the knees and see if you can find a little bit of stillness here. Lengthening out the back of the hamstrings, especially when you sit a lot, you find those hamstrings get very tight. It's also an inversion. We've got the blood rushing to our head. Take some nice breaths. Means we have three more breaths here in our first shape of dangling. Perhaps your hands can come down towards the mat. Perhaps you start to straighten your legs a little bit, but again, not feeling too much pain in the hamstrings. 
Once you've found the end of your third breath, you can let the blanket come to the side if you use that variation. We're going to slowly roll up. It's important. I want you to bring your arms forward and up over the top of your head. A lot of times when we sit up like that after we've been down for a long time, we can get lightheaded. But if you bring your arms above your head, that really can help to counter that. So leave them up there for a moment longer. You can look up if you'd like just to kind of stretch your entire body. Beautiful. And then exhale, let the arms come down by the side. You can shake it out any way that you'd like. You could get in and take some hip circles if that feels good. Perhaps what we call palm trees swaying in the wind. Just kind of let your arms flop around here as you go toe to toe. Beautiful. All right, we're going to take just a little warm up before our next one, just to bring some movement into the body. So the feet can be hips width distance or you can bring the toes together if you would prefer. We're gonna warm up our hips with a little bit of what I call yin-yasa. So this is a chair pose yin-yasa. So it's yin, but it's with a little bit of movement. So we're warming up our hips. So bring hands to heart center and then begin to bend your knees and sit back into chair pose or putasana. And then we'll inhale, rise up, bring the arms down by the side. This is Tadasana mountain pose. And then exhale again, sit down, maybe a little bit deeper this time. Beautiful. Inhale, rise up. And exhale, sit down. Continue on with your own breath. We'll take a couple more rounds of this. So one of the most challenging parts of yin for me to begin was the stillness. My muscles, my joints have a little trouble with it. They prefer this kind of dynamic movement. But what I've found is if I dynamically move a little bit before and then hold, then I'm a little bit more um, apt to be able to do it and it's not so excruciating. So bring in a little dynamic movement in first. Well, let's take one more round and then we'll meet in that mountain pose with the arms down by the side. And when everyone arrives here, next we're going to move into Crouching Tiger. So Crouching Tiger is another way to talk about Yogi Squat or what we call Malasana or Garland Pose. So for me, I love having a blanket here. We're going to take this in um, three stages. They're only going to be a minute each. And you can kind of start up on um, with a lot of support and then maybe by the third you won't have any. Um, again, we're going to have lots of options here. If you have knee issues, I'm going to say this from the very beginning, and, and having too much pressure on the knees is too much, you can take a blanket to the back of the knees as you sit down here. So know that that can sometimes help people. Um, you can also sit on a block, and if none of that works, lie on your back and take happy baby on your back for each minute that we do, or hug your knees into your chest because you're getting the same kind of idea. So for the first progression, I like to take either a blanket or you could take a bolster if you had it and roll it up. And where this blanket is gonna go is underneath my heels. And it's gonna create just a little bit of support there for me to be able to sit down. So where the feet, the feet point does not matter. It depends on the orientation of how your hips articulate. So some people you'll see really externally rotate. There are some people that can turn their feet completely forward. I find that impossible for me to do, but some people, that's the way their hips are made. So for me, I turn my feet out a bit, and then I just start to work myself down. So I bend into the knees, and then eventually coming down into Crouching Tiger. So the hands can come down. You could have the hands at heart center. You could sit on a block, or again, you can build a block Support for the forehead here. Just breathe into your first set of Crouching Tiger. So this one releases the lumbar spine, the hips, it strengthens the ankles, and it provides deep hip flexion here. So we all probably sat like this as kids, but over time we kind of lose this mobility. In many parts of the world, you see people still sitting like this. They work like this. They prepare their food like this. So it's a very healthy movement for the spine, also for the hips. 
but one that takes a little bit of time to sometimes get back into. Yogis, take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale, and release. To come out of this, place your hands down and then just help yourself up. Keep your head down here. So we're gonna separate the feet a little bit wider here and the feet are parallel or you can turn the toes in. And we're just gonna dangle here for a moment in what's called wide-legged forward fold. So this stretches out the back of the legs a little bit. You can kind of sway back and forth. You can bend into opposite knees. And again, if you need, you can be up a little bit higher on blocks here. Just taking a little bit of movement in between the sets. Now, if that felt pretty challenging for you and you'd like to repeat that, that's absolutely fine. If you wanna take it a little bit deeper, you can take your blanket and unfold it once so it's a little bit more um, narrow this time or not as high up. So that can be the progression, and maybe you don't need a blanket, and that's absolutely fine. All right, let's prepare for our second set. So bring the heels back in, toe, turn the toes out if you need, and work yourself down into Crouching Tiger. And again, because we're more in a yin class, you can have the elbows on the inside of the knees kind of pressing it out, or you might want to just pick the hands down and kind of surrender forward a little bit more. Continue to breathe here. Use your breath to help you. Feeling out any tightness, any restrictions. Imagine that you can soften those a bit. Take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale, and release. Again, we come out by placing the hands on the floor, keeping the head low, but lift the hips up. You can step off of the blanket and widen the stance again here. Maybe you come a little bit wider this time. And if you'd like, the feet are either parallel or pigeon-toed. Maybe you walk your hands forward. And find a wide-legged downward dog here. Again, we're taking standing wide-legged forward fold just to kind of stretch this out. You can bend in the knees. This one actually helps to stretch out the back of the legs as well. Multitasking a bit. All right, enough transition. We have one more set here. So begin to walk the feet a little bit closer. And again, you can use the same prop that you've been using on the same height, or maybe this time you're ready to not have a prop underneath. You can still be in your first variation. It completely depends on where your hips are. And as you're ready, sit down into your final crouching tiger. Yogi's a nice deep breath in through the nose. 
Open the mouth, exhale, and release. This time, you can bring the hands behind you and we're just gonna sit down. Once you do that, lengthen the legs out. Maybe give yourself a little self-massage here. Bounce out the legs. Enough of those standing postures. All right. So we are going to find our back body now. So we're going to lie down on our back to take a nice stretch before our next one. So plant the feet and then hold on to the back of the thighs and lower yourself down. For a moment, hug your knees into your chest and you can rock left and right. You can circle the knees and the joints a little bit. I know I can feel that crouching tiger in my hips. And then release the knees and lengthen the entire body out on the mat. So lengthen the legs and then reach the arms up over the top of the head. So we're taking that nice full body stretch. Really take up space here. Just as a nice feel good transition, we're gonna take what's called banana asana. So we're gonna look like a banana on the floor or you can think of yourself as a crescent moon if you don't like bananas. So walk your wrists over towards the right corner of your mat, and then walk your heels over towards the right corner of your mat. So we have a lateral stretch on the left side of the body. So you can take your right index and thumb and encircle your left wrist to get a little bit deeper. You could cross your right ankle over your left or your left over your right and just breathe into the left side body. So both of my shoulders and both of my hips are still on the mat. I've just taken my arms and legs to the side. So again, I look kind of like that banana. I have a curve in my body. Take a couple more breaths here. We oftentimes don't stretch our side bodies out, but we use them in regular life when we're reaching for something. So a lot of times you can find me that movement, we haven't taken it, we can actually pull things in our sides, weird little muscles. This is a nice one to take, just to kind of stretch everything out. Hopefully yogis will take the other side. So go ahead and release, walk everything back to center, and take a nice full body stretch again. And then we start by walking the wrists over to the left corner of the mat, and then the heels over. And again, you can take the left fingers, the pointer, and the thumb to encircle the right wrist. So you feel like that helps you get a little deeper. Crossing the left ankle over the right or to the right over the left. It doesn't really matter. You can try both. Make sure your right shoulder is still in contact with the mat. So we're not rolling up here. We're staying down. We're staying in contact with the floor. We're just taking the lateral stretch for the right side body. Perhaps you take this opportunity to imagine that you could breathe and inflate the right lung a little bit more. And thinking about those lungs in three dimensions, some open everywhere. Beautiful yogis, we'll release that. And again, walk everything back through center. Take that nice full body stretch. And then as you're ready, arms can come down by the sides, bend into the knees. And then again, you can hug the knees into the chest if you'd like. Take a couple of rocks left and right to begin. Just rocking on the spine here. And then begin to rock up and down. We're going to um, the length of the spine, as long as that feels okay on your back. If it doesn't, you can simply roll to the side and meet us in a tabletop position. So if you're rocking, you can roll up over the knees and then meeting in tabletop. So this is where we might want to find our blanket to pad our knees. So we're gonna be on our hands and knees for a bit here, especially the knees. So you could find a blanket to pad the knee if you would like. A lot of times that'll help us here. 
So once you get here, we'll just take a couple rounds of cow and cat together, just to kind of warm up the spine and get a little movement. So as you inhale, drop the belly, look up, tailbone up. Exhale, chin to chest, press the earth away, round your spine. Beautiful, just move through that on your own breath a couple more times, as fast as slow as you'd like, adding in any motion if you would like it. I'll take one more round and then find your neutral tabletop. So we have a blanket underneath the knees if we need that padding. The other thing that can be nice for this next shape we're going to find is either yoga blocks or bricks or books will work too. Um, a little bit of support for the hands. So we're going to work into what's called dragon pose. So I know this is another big fire breathing pose. Um, can bring up quite a bit, especially for me. This is probably one of my least favorite postures, but that, guess what? That means I know that I probably need it. So as you're ready, just lift your right leg up and I'm gonna mirror you so I'll look the same as you. So lift your right leg up, reach the toes back, and then you're gonna step your right foot forward in between your hands. So we want to try to line up here, and I'm going to spin and show to the side. We want to make sure that the ankle and knee are stacked here. So we don't want the knee to jump way in front of the ankle, like kind of like a skiing kind of situation here. Now we want to stack those joints. So make sure that the ankle and knee are stacked, or the knee can be even a little bit behind the ankle. So this is where we want that padding for the back knee. Now, if you're feeling it on the back kneecap, what you can do is tuck your back toes and slide your left knee back a little bit. So you're more on the meaty part of your leg. And then here, I like to come up with hands on blocks. You can even start up a little bit higher. I'm gonna start our timer now, but still talk a little bit more, because I don't wanna keep doing this forever. So again, this is a little bit more of an active yin pose, so we don't hold it for as long. So if you're really wanting to feel something here, you can always bring a forearm onto the um, thigh, or you could bring both forearms onto the thigh, interlace the fingers and lift up. Where you want to feel this, a couple different places. So we have um, compression of the front hip, so that's your right hip. You have extension of the back hip. We're also stretching out the psoas here, and a lot of times that's where you feel this one is stretching out into the psoas. So it's an asymmetrical stretch. This is really good for our hips. But this one, more than any, a lot of times can bring up a lot of anger and frustration. So know that that's okay. Just breathe through it. You come to yoga for the first time and your teacher puts you into this pose, you might never come back. So know that that happens. Just continue to breathe. Things begin to open up a little bit more. I know that you can always bring the blocks down a little bit more, so you're feeling a little bit more of that compression. Again, you use your intuition to take it to your edge. Please, you have three breaths left in the first side of Dragon Pose. You take them in through the nose and out through the mouth. You've been finding a little bit of sound as you release a lion's breath or imagine a fire breathing dragon.
Once you find the end of your third breath, bring your hands underneath your shoulders and then begin to walk back with the hands and straighten that front leg. So we're finding Ardha Hanumanasana or half monkey splits here to stretch it out. So you can flex the right toes in towards the face, maybe bow in. If a little bit of movement here would feel good for you, a little glide in the hips, feel free to do so. And eventually we'll re-bend into that knee so you can shoot that right leg back. And again, you could circle out the hip here a little bit if you'd like, maybe just stretch the leg back, tuck the toes, stretch the back of the Achilles. And let's come back into tabletop position. So we'll just take a couple rounds of cow and cat here in between. As you inhale, drop the belly, look up, tailbone up. Exhale, chin to chest, press the earth away. Beautiful. Take another round on your own breath. Maybe add in a little circular movement if that feels good, or just kind of shake it out. Not to delay in the inevitable, come back to neutral spine, and we'll find the second side of dragon pose. So lift that left leg up. Reach it towards the back of your space, and then eventually you'll step it forward in between your hands. So again, we want to make sure that that knee is not shearing in front of the ankle. That creates shearing in the knee, and that can cause a lot of pain and damage, so we want to come back a little bit. Where we can move is tucking the back toes and moving the back knee back. So again, you might find on this side that something different needs to be done depending on how your hips articulate. If you've had an injury in one or the other hip or other parts of the body, you might feel this differently. So find yourself where you need to be. You could be up on blocks. You could use that progression to go down as we're going. Maybe a block and a forearm, or maybe both forearms up if you'd like a little bit more fire or interlace the fingers around the thigh to lift up a little bit more if you'd like. Then compression of the hip in the front extension of the hip and the back, and we're really getting into that back psoas. It's a good area to stretch, especially when we're sitting, we tend to constrict that or contract that a lot. So this opens it up. Also allows us to open it up without actually doing a back bend, which can be nice. You noticing the sensations in your body as you breathe. Again, finding that fine line between not feeling it at all or feeling way too much. That's your edge. You want to approach it slowly. We have time here, these yin shapes. So imagine that you're slowly creeping forward to a cliff or an edge. You want to go right up to that edge. Take your time. Work into it and keep checking in with your body. Yogis, you have three more breaths left in dragon pose. Again, maybe deepening the breath, taking it in through the nose and releasing it out of the mouth. Using some sound if you would like, maybe humming or a lion's breath. Sticking out the tongue. Imagine fire breathing out of your mouth.
And once you've completed that third breath, again, bring the hands underneath the shoulders. Begin to rise up enough so that you can start to straighten that front leg. Again, walking it back, finding Ardha Hanumanasana, half monkey splits. Lengthen out the back of the leg, flex the toes in towards the base. Again, your choice here in bringing some movement back and forth in between, a little glide in the hips. And eventually rebending into that front knee and then kicking the left leg back, however you'd like to do that. Circling it out, stretching it out if that feels good, maybe tucking the back toes. Circling in both directions. You can let both knees come down and kind of wag the hips left and right. Right, I'm going to show you this from the side. So we're going to transition into our next seated posture from tabletop. So you can have a blanket or a bolster near you. You can use the blanket for this one to pad the knees if you'd like. Um, but the knees are going to be a little bit farther in front of you, so you can kind of be on the edge of your blanket. And if this entrance doesn't work for you, we're eventually going to find shoelace, so I'll help you with that. But let's again, um, let's see, let's go back to the first side. So lift your right leg up, and then you're just gonna bend into the knee and cross your right knee behind your left. And then widen the ankles a bit. And if you can, begin to walk the hands back, and you'll sit in between the heels. So I'm gonna look the same as you are when I turn to the front, but from the side I'm not. So the right knee is on the bottom, the left knee is on top. So this is shoelace pose. And again, you can have a blanket here to pad the knees if you would like, or you could sit on a blanket. You can also sit on the edge of a bolster, which I'm gonna show if you'd like to give you a little bit more space in the hips. So as I turn to face you, ideally, you want the knees to be both pointing forward and stacked. Now there you might find that there's a lot of space in between, and that's fine. Know that you can put a block or blanket in between or a block underneath. And if this absolutely just is not working for you, you'll find half shoelace where you kick your bottom right leg out. But what I want you to be really careful of, make sure there's no hyperextension in the knee if you kick that out because we're putting pressure down. In fact, if you do this, I want you to take it with a blanket underneath your knee, the back of your knee. All right, so working into shoelace pose. So this one is actually still external rotation of the hips, but we feel it in our IT bands down the sides often. And from here, we have lots of options with the blocks. We can come forward on our elbows. If you come forward with the forehead, you might need more than one block. Finding what works for you here. So this one, it releases the hips, we release the IT band and the lower spine. And I find that people either love this one or hate this one. I actually love this one. This is probably my favorite pose. But it doesn't mean that it's yours. So know that if you're feeling a little bit of frustration or anger, that that's absolutely okay to feel that way. It's okay to be angry at me for saying we're doing shoelace today. The dark side of yoga that sometimes teachers don't talk about yoga does bring these things up, but there's a reason for it. We bring these things up to release them. Otherwise, we find that it's a suitcase that we can never put down. We carry it with us always. Bringing up this anger and letting it out allows us to be free of it and to move on. So again, if you're feeling anger, imagine Ganesh or Ganesha trying to help us break through our obstacles.
Please, let's take three more slow, deep breaths here, perhaps folding forward a little bit more to find your edge, feeling it in the outsides of the hips, that's our target area. To find the end of your third breath, walk your hands back up. We're gonna twist this out for a moment. So we're just gonna add a twist into this. So bring your right hand to your left knee and bring your left arm behind you and just gently twist to the side. And so we'll release that, walk the hands around and then counter twist the other direction. Coming back to center, bring the hands behind you and lean back and uncross the legs. Just shake the legs out here. You could take some windshield wipes if that feels good. We're just going to come into this the normal way, the second side. So nothing too fancy. All right, once you've brought a little bit of blood flow back into the legs and you're ready to dive into that second side, we'll find the second side of shoelace. So this time the left leg is on the bottom and then we cross the right leg over the top. And again, you might um, find it's very different doing it this way than it was the first. It's going to depend on your um, custom articulation in your spine. Know that it's always okay to elevate the hips, so sitting on a blanket or a bolster. Patting the knees, block under the knees in between, or blocks to be used under elbows or forehead to fold forward. Know that you don't have to fold forward here. You can stay upright. You might feel enough here. If you're not feeling it, then I'll invite you to fold forward. Folding forward also helps you to kind of um, turn inward and encase everything. So it help you stay within your own body and feel your sensations can be hard to do sometimes. Breathing into the second side of shoelace pose. The reading for you, this is from Journey to the Heart. So it's called Be Present for Yourself. Learn to be present for yourself, fully present in a way that's new and delightful. Be present for your thoughts and emotions. Be present for the gentle way in which your heart and body lead you on. Learn to be fully present for each step of your growth, each step of your journey. Value yourself, who you are, what you think and feel, and how you grow. For many years, you've neglected yourself. It was as though you were unconscious of who you were, how you felt, what you believed. You believed that kept you safe protected from feelings you didn't want to feel. You believed it was how you should live. Now you are learning another way. Survival is no longer enough. It does not meet the needs of your heart and your soul. Now you want to live fully and joyfully. To do that, you must be present for yourself. Be fully present for others too. Be present for their spirits, their emotions, the words they have to say to you but especially be present for their hearts. You no longer have to fear losing or neglecting yourself if you are present for others. You can do this safely now. You will not be consumed by their needs. You will not become trapped in the workings of their lives. And if you're present for yourself, you'll know how much presence to give to others. 
be present for life, for the starlit skies and the chirping birds that sing in the morning sun, be present for the earth, the grass under your feet, for the feel of a snowflake in your hand, be present for all the magic and mysteries of the universe. But most of all, be present for yourself. Then your presence for others and life will naturally follow. Yogis, find three more deep breaths in shoelace pose. Perhaps again, approaching that edge skillfully Coming down a little bit more, maybe folding forward a little bit more to really feel into that target area. Always backing out of sharp or shooting pain. As you find the end of your third breath, begin to walk your hands underneath your shoulders. And again, we're gonna find a little twist to this at the end. So left hand to the top of the right knee right hand behind you and gently twist. Beautiful, release that twist and we'll take it the other direction. And gently come back to center, bring the hands behind you and again, uncross the legs, lean back and shake them out. Bringing that little bit of massage into the hips, maybe the knees, wherever you're feeling it. Beautiful. And we're going to set up to lie down on our backs, but I do want to have the hips elevated a little bit here. So we're going to end with kind of a gentle inversion. We're going to stretch out the front of the hips. It'll take us into our final posture. The best way to set up here is um, we're going to set up in what's a supported bridge. So we're either gonna have a bolster or even just a blanket folded up underneath the hips. It doesn't have to be a huge one. And I do also want you, if you have a block or a pillow or something, I want you to bring that block to the left side of you. So I'm gonna play with my little bolster here. But like I said, if you have a blanket or pillows to put underneath your back, that's fine too. So I'm gonna sit my hips up on it. So I'm kind of sitting right on the edge of it. And then I'm going to come down onto my elbows and lower myself down. Now, once I get down, I can adjust as I need. And again, this block is just going to be over to the side to use in a moment. So I want this to feel supported. So it's underneath the lowest part of my back or sacrum. I don't want it in the mid back. So if I put it in the mid back, you see here that I have this curve here. This is not what I want. I want this to be supported. So I move it down and then if you'd like, you could lengthen your legs out long. So we've done a lot of compression of the front of the hips today. So this should counter it. So we're stretching out the front of the psoas. We're having our, the front of our hips in extension. And you can reach the arms up over the top of the head if that feels good to you. Just be here as a transition before we take a final twist. I like to end practices with twists because they're very detoxifying. They're also um, really good for digestion and elimination. They help us bring um, nourishment to the spine. Beautiful. Go ahead and bring the arms back down by the sides if you've reached them up. And then draw the feet in close to the body so you're planting the soles of the feet down. Again, hopefully we have our block over to the side or pillows or whatever. You might need to adjust a little bit. All we're gonna do is we're gonna keep this padding underneath our sacrum if we can. Now, if you can't, that's fine. You can just do this twist without anything under your hips. Otherwise, it's gonna be an inverted hip twist is what this calls. So our, our um, hips are above our heart. So if you don't like that inversion, skip it. Keep the um, hips on the floor. But if you can keep the inversion, you just hug the knees into the chest, and then let the knees fall off to the left. So the block is here, or pillows are here to support the knees. So the knees are kind of on line with the hips, so you're up high, or they might be a little bit lower. That's fine, too. You can reach the arms out. You can either look up 
or you can look over to the right. So we'll just be here for a little bit. Feeling into this final twist. Well, yogis, let's take one more nice deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale and release. Gently bring your knees back up to center. And you can hug the knees into the chest for a moment. If you'd like, you could drop the feet down and find a little windshield wipe if that feels good. So knowing that we're moving to the other side, you take your block and you bring it to the other side. And again, you might need to adjust your pillows or your bolster a bit. Eventually we'll find inverted hip twist on the second side. So hugging the knees into the chest and then very gently letting those knees fall off to the right. So the knees again are supported by either pillows or a block. You could stack the knees, you could stagger them a little bit if you'd like. Again, if you don't like this, you can have no padding, no blocks, and just take a normal twist. They're still getting those benefits of taking a twist and nourishing the spine. Gaze is either up, or you can look over your left shoulder if that's okay on your neck. Feel supported and nourished in your final twist. Imagine that you are bringing high-speed nutrients into the intervertebral discs as we're twisting them. Imagine the gentle wringing out of the organs, getting rid of toxins. Yogis, let's take one more nice nourishing breath. Inhale in through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale, release, let it go. Using that little bit of core strength to bring the knees back to center. And again, if you'd like here, you could hug the knees into the chest. Maybe rock a little left and right on that bolster or pillow to massage the sacrum. And eventually let your feet land down. Now this can be a nice entrance to a supported Shavasana. So what I'm gonna do is just lift my hips up and push my bolster down so that it's underneath my knees. Because that can be a little bit more supportive for the lower back, pillows underneath the knees as well, or any other variation of your final resting pose or Shavasana. Work yourself there. Just taking some nice breaths, letting everything go now. So now we're having no effort, effort less. Let the floor, let the earth, let your mat completely support your weight and release. Uh, 
and feeling the sensations in your body, remembering the things that you went through in your shapes. What did you feel? Did you feel release in certain places, frustration in others, perhaps pain? Are you able to work through that? And thinking about Ganesh, help you to break through your blocks or your obstacles. As you're relaxing in your final Shavasana, again, I'll find a reading from Journey to the Heart. The book is by Melody Beattie. And this is actually today's reading, so she does it by date. So this is April 17th. So this is Listen to the Voice of Your Heart. Cultivate the art of listening to your intuition, your inner voice. This is the guidance of your heart. It's a voice that speaks differently from the one in your head. The heart whispers softly, the head prattles loudly. The head has an agenda for our lives. It chatters away boldly, but its vision is limited. It leaves no room for the mysterious workings of the universe. Nor does it take into account the side trips we need to get where we're going, where our souls need to go. It's the voice that says, this is the way it's going to be. The heart, the inner voice, speaks differently. Sometimes it whispers, sometimes it pulls, sometimes it pushes. It's spontaneous, in the present moment, and often a surprise. The heart takes into account what has to be done and the best way to do that. The heart takes emotions into account, the way things feel, the way you feel, the wisdom of your soul. The heart leads us into and through the lessons we're here to learn. Cultivate your inner voice. Practice listening to the whispers of your heart. Practice trusting your intuition, what you really feel, what you really know. Practice until that voice is the one that you hear. Be patient, be gentle. Let yourself learn to hear the gentle and trustworthy words of your heart. I invite you to stay in your final Shavasana for as long as you would like. Perhaps you would like to just rest there as we close out our practice today. Take as much time as you need. Feel into your body, do the things that make you happy, do the things that feel good for you. If you want to be led out of your practice, you can begin to bring movement into the fingers and the toes. Eventually taking this into that nice full body stretch, reaching the arms and legs long. And then rolling over onto your left or right side, whichever is calling to you this morning. Use your bicep as a pillow. Take a couple breaths here, just reorienting. This is fetal position. I like to say this is the first asana or shape that we all learned. And as you feel ready, pressing yourself up to a comfortable seat, whatever that means for you, we'll close out our practice together. You can bring the palms together, hands at heart center. This is Anjali Mudra. Perhaps you close your eyes. Since we talked about Ganesh or Ganesha through this practice, I will end with Ganesha's mantra. So it's Om Gam Gana Pata. Yay, Namaha. I'll say that a couple more times. Om Gam Gana Pata Yay, Namaha. One more time. Om Gam Gana Pata Yay, Namaha. Thank you for practicing yin yoga with me, yogis. Namaste.